Hey, how's it going? Today I'm going to be rebuilding a set of heads for my Suicide MX-3. So I'm gonna be rebuilding two of these. I'm going to lap the valves and install heavier springs so I can get a little higher RPM. I'm trying to reduce the actual float because of all the extra boost I've got going in. The factory springs would not be able to keep those valves open. So I'm gonna throw that in. I'm not gonna be running insanely high RPM. I'm gonna be aiming for about 8,300 RPM or something like that. Basically have my hard rev limit at that and my soft limit at 8,000 RPMs. It's not gonna be an insane amount of RPM. It's only 1,000 RPM over stock, but it'll um, make a big difference because it'll gain about 1,000 RPM in my power band. So instead of having a part power band from 4,000 to 7,000 RPM, I'm gonna have a, a power band from 4,000 to 8,000 RPM. So that will actually be a nasty power band for a car with sweet low gearing that I have in my MX-3 right now. So it'll really rip, really put the power down in first through fourth, it'll just like literally rip. To say the least, I am literally so excited to see what this thing's gonna feel like because I've never had built heads. I've never had a built bottom end with like crazy amount of boost thrown at it. I've had a lot of boost thrown at the stock Zetties that I've been running and it's been very fun. And now it's gonna be about twice the air getting thrown at it. So it's gonna be quite a different machine. And the biggest difference between the small turbo and the big turbo is I was running out of power when I was reaching my 7,000 RPM rev limit because my turbo was too small. So it was nosing off because it was actually running out of air. So with the bigger turbo, it's gonna make it make more power. So it's gonna make crazy power right to 8,000 RPM and then be completely shut off by my rev limiter. Before it was like, ah, and then it would kind of nose over. You'd feel it kind of like droop and sag over the RPM limit and it was, it was definitely noticeable. So now with the big turbo, it's literally just going to spike. It's literally going to do whoosh, like you see on the dyno charts, they are just to the moon. And uh, it's going to definitely do that right to 600 horsepower, hopefully. So let's say 500 or hopefully <laughs> just from the heads, it's going to wake the thing up. I got to get her ready to handle all that extra boost. But like I said, I'm, I'm gonna explain a little bit why replacing the springs with heavier ones is a beneficial idea. It's because when the valves come out to let the air in and air out, so these are my exhaust and these are my intake, and when they open, they're wanting air to go in, right? Into the combustion chamber that's right here. And when there's a bunch of boost behind it, literally like going around the valve when this opens, it's going to want to hold the valve open and not have it fully shut because the extra air coming in. It's literally pressure rather than vacuum, right? And that's the nasty thing about turbos that they're literally forcing air in rather than the engine trying to suck it in. So that's why they just literally go to the moon on dynos. It's wild. But yeah, I actually kind of want to explain why turbos work so well. Everybody just says, yeah, I put a turbo on it, but like why? Yeah, it's putting more air in, but is it because it's just making more power or is it because it's literally helping the engineering along the way? Like when it's sucking down for the intake stroke, if you have enough boost, it's making power on the actual in intake stroke, which is nuts. So rather than it, coming the piston being brought down hard by the engine by literally the crankshafts pulling it down instead it's getting pushed down from the actual boost and it, it like it's not like a crazy amount of pressure down or even just helping it down but that makes a massive difference in making the engine spin up so quickly and um, when it's helping to spin something up quickly as well it's going to produce more horsepower and that's why turbos again make horsepower they, the torque numbers do go up but horsepower just goes to the moon and then the torque curves are kind of like flat so that's just i'm just kind of explaining why everything is working and why why people do this why people rebuild heads and the theory behind it 
Well, honestly, that kind of got off topic, but uh, I'm just gonna get right to this, pull the valves out. I've actually got a pretty good start on these heads from the fall because I started rebuilding these. I have already lapped them, but I'm going to redo them just because I know I can do a better job now. So I can really pay attention to what's going on. And now I know what's going in. For me, I, I like rebuilding things literally right before they go together and onto the engine because things can happen. Like there could be something in there for all I know with it just sitting in a bag even, like literally something could have happened. It's impossible to know unless you're literally checking before you put the engine together. This is serious, this is serious tie. <laughs> so like I said, yeah, like I'm checking for everything to be clean because the next thing is, is this engine's going together very soon. So I'm going to make sure everything's clean as while I'm in there really pay attention to how this is done and making sure it's done correctly. Yeah, I'm gonna make marks on the cardboard that is cleaned and I'm going to pull out the valves and mark them all and everything. I'm going to lap them real quick. First off, I'm going to clean the valves and clean the head as best I can. I'm going to break clean the thing to death. I'm gonna put it upside down, spray it, then put it right side up and spray it and make sure that thing is right clean. Same with the valves, and then I'm going to lap them. Since I cleaned them, I'm going to put these all back in the head in their original place and I'm going to lap them with them in there just so I don't lose them. They could fall over, stuff like that. So the valves can be in the head while you're actually doing the other ones, lapping those. So it's honestly safest bet, keep everything in order, things won't fall and just be careful. That's the best thing to do unless you have like a stupid amount of work area, I don't. So that's what I'm gonna do. I take the two cylinders here because I don't want the valves to fall out and that will ensure that they won't. I'm gonna be holding it 90 degrees anyways. It shouldn't fall out, but I don't want it to happen. So here I've got my grinding compound for valves. I'm going to lap them. So I'm going to lace it with this grinding compound on the seat and then I'm going to lap them. I will show you how I do that. And then I have to fully clean the grinding compound out of the cylinder. This is gritty and you don't want that in your engine again. So um, this is grit you're literally putting into it to lap it, but then you need to take it out. It has to all be removed. I can't tell you that anymore. So um, I just want to be very clear on that. First valve I'm going to do, I push from the back, now pulling from the front. I'm going to put a little grinding compound on the seat there. I've actually lapped these before. I lapped these in the fall, like I said. I'm relapping just to make sure everything's good and that will help me sleep at night. So I'm going to put it back in the head, spin it with my drill with a vacuum line. And I'm serious, a vacuum line on the back of the valve right there, stick it on and then attach it to the drill and spin it up get those valves spinning, get um, some in and out action. You'll see how I finesse that, but it has to go in and out because you need to get the grinding compound back in. And that's what it is doing when you're pushing the valve back out. Cause the full how to do video up right here. Check that out if you wanna know fully how to do it. So now I'm just gonna bang this out. And then the next thing after that is the springs. And then the next thing after that's retainers. So I'm showing you all this today in this one episode. Putting valve into the actual compound.
So as you can see, it's gray on the edge of the valve and that is from it being seated correctly with the actual ground compound. And it's the same in the actual valve seat here. And that is good. So this one is A-OK, -okay, all cleaned up. So I'm going to put him back in and save him for later. And I will fully clean it with brake clean after I'm done every single one. Sweet, so I've got everything lapped, everything's in order on the table there, and I've got the head here. So, since I've got all that compound in the head, I need to remove it. I did the best I could with a rag, but now it needs fully clean, it needs brake clean, it needs dipped in gas, it needs something. So what I'm gonna do is dip the valves in gas, and then I'm gonna brake clean them, and then wipe with a clean rag, and put them back into the same spot that I've got them in. So I'm gonna take the valves, put them into the gas, spray off with brake clean into this bucket, and then oil the valve, and straight in it goes, and it stays there, it's not coming out. That's the final step, is just oiling it up, banging it in the right hole, and then waiting until you put a valve spring in. I've got everything all set up in the right spot and now I'm going to rotate it down to the table without valves falling out. I'm gonna stall my washers into each valve stem. I got all the washers way down in there for each valve stem and now I'm going to put new valve stems on. Those are all naked already. I've already removed them from months and months and months ago but now I'm going to install brand new ones. Here are my valve stems. I'm going to dip them all in oil and then I'm going to drop them on top of the valve and push them in with pliers and get them to click in on the receding line on that rubber right there. I got all the valve stems in with oil. They're all on top of the valve. And now I have to push it in. So I have to lock them in place. What I'm gonna do is get a 10 mil and push that over top onto the actual seal and let it click in. Just a simple 10 mil and an extension. The stems are in all the way to the bottom, all perfectly in there. And if there's any slight second guessing on how they went on, remove it, throw it in the garbage, put another one on. Because if you don't know 100% if it went on, it's not worth the 25 cents these seals are each. So just grab another one, put another one on. Order tons of these. I literally have boxes of these. Now I'm gonna install all the springs. I'm gonna clean them quick first. Almost there, so now I just gotta put the retainers in. I got the first one in off camera just to practice. So now I gotta lever this down with the retainer on top and then put the retainer clips inside around the valve. It's very difficult. I usually put grease on the actual retainers so they don't move around too, too much. Just 
There we go, I got them all in, and I just have one more head to do. This one turned out really good. All the valves are really nice and clean. Everything I kept very, very neat and tidy. So I've got heavier springs in there. With the retainers on them, this is good to go. The only thing left is to put the HLAs in, but I'll do that once I have the other bottom end built. And now I just got one more to go. I've already removed the valves. I'm just gonna clean everything like I did before, just in quicker fashion. I can spin the valve springs in the holes down in there because if they don't they won't when the engines running and they do spin when they are actually running and so these are things you got to check as well because if the springs are too big that's no good and unfortunately these ones were but I had to make them fit and they are good to go now Yes, so I am completely done rebuilding my heads. I did not rebuild one head, I rebuilt four. So I have two for each engine, one for the front engine, one for the back. And what I've done is rebuilt the head from bottom to top. Seats, valves, valve springs, the whole nine yards. And I've lapped everything, everything's good to go. Upgraded valve springs, I'm very excited. It's not an insane head build, but it's going to definitely benefit me. I'm even running stock cams. So I'm running the stock valve size and I'm running stock valves and I'm running stock retainers on these two engines. I'm testing the limits of this stuff, that is for sure. And I'm going to be running stock cams. So that's a lot of stock. The only thing I've truly upgraded is the springs. But other than that, everything's brand new, ready to go, fresh rebuilt heads from stock other than the valve springs. Like I said earlier, the valve springs will hold the valves open and not let them hold open from the boost. And it should really perform. I'm not gonna rub these things to the moon, so it's gonna work really good. And honestly, it's tied in good with stock cams, because when you go to big cams, valves are getting held open longer. Valves are actually shutting quicker because they're, they have a, a big overlap. The valves are being held open long. The valves are shutting quicker because there's more uh, actual lift. And that is a lot of motion for the valves to be doing. With the stock cams, it's not doing as much. So they can, they can really rev up. So I think this is going to be a bulletproof setup for me. It's, it was cheap for me to do. I did everything myself except for decking the head. And I'm very happy to say I have rebuilt four heads for this car. It's been spread out for about a year and I finally collected all the parts. It was so hard to find new valves and I've got them all and this is looking badass. The heads that are in the front engine are going to be HLA and that means hydraulic glass adjusters for the lifters and the rear engine I'm running solid lifters so I'm running the G4 heads and that'll even be better for higher RPM. And I'm running the stock G4 cams and it's going to rip. I've had a G4 boosted before and it literally sang compared to the other DEs and ZEs. So I'm really, really pumped about that. This is huge, huge, huge guys, because the heads are the most difficult part. Rebuilding a bottom end, I can do in no time at all. You just gotta check the rings, gap the rings, Check the clearances for the bearings and the bottom end and then you just start bolting it away and torquing down. So I'm really excited. I am definitely on my way up to having two fully built engines with Weissco pistons, fully built like from top to bottom. It, oh, the bottom end, I'm putting it together with these two engines is something else. So definitely stay tuned for that. Building this for a thousand horsepower and we'll get back to you. We'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, and subscribe.